Hello and welcome to MMA Crips Fighting Talk. On today's show, I'll be speaking with the raw deal, Justin Baseman. Justin is currently competing under the Bellator banner and is 14 4 and 1 as a pro mixed martial artist. With that, welcome to MMA Crips Fighting Talk, Justin. Hey, 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 thank you for having me back on, man. It's always good talking with you. Uh, it's our pleasure, Justin. Now let's kick things off with your last bout against Herman Torado at Bellator 115 this past Friday. Now your bout with Herman did end in a draw decision. You obviously felt that you won the fight in a post-fight interview in the cage. Have you had a chance to rewatch your fight with Herman and do you still feel like you won? Yeah, you know, um, a lot of controversy in that fight. Uh, it's, for example, in the, in the second round, um, we we all thought the fight was over. Um, I honestly thought it, sh- it should have been stopped a little sooner. Um, yeah. Actually, actually, you know what? I, it wasn't stopped. It when he took me, he took me off at the end of the second round. I thought he was taking me off to stop the fight. I think everybody had that had that going through their head. They actually wouldn't let my corner guys in the cage. They told them they told my corner guys that the fight was over. So. The doctor had to come in and make sure he was okay and there was a lot of confusion going on. And then about two minutes go by and finally they decide, okay, let's fight. Here's the third round. And I was I was kind of shocked. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't like that at all. You know, I, I really thought that his corner would even throw in the, in the towel, you know. But, uh, yeah, hey, what, what can I say, man? You know, I, I can't, can't leave it up to the judges. Sometimes you can't even leave it up to the rest. You never know what's going to happen in there. Um, I went in there, I gave it my all, and of course I'll I'll fight Herman again. Um, he's a he's a tough cat, you know. That was a that was one hell of a fight. I think we stole the show, and I think it was fight at night. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd fight him again, no problem. But uh, I, I know for sure I won that fight. I I don't know why they would say draw. Kind of blows my mind. Well, that was the big talking point of the fight. Well, two big talking points, obviously, was the judge's decision. But the first major talking point was at the end of round two. Now, I just thought you were celebrating because you had a good... Obviously, at home, we could hear the buzzer. We could hear the clacks and whatnot. Obviously, in the stadium, it might be a bit different with the crowd noise and etc. So when you was raising your hand, I thought you was raising your hand because you had a really good round. <laughs> I was like, yeah, good round, uh, Justin. <laughs> so, obviously, then the, then the announcers on the TV were like, I think Justin felt like the, the fight was stopped there. So I was like, I was looking at you and I was trying to, you know, check out your body language. And what did that do to you mentally going back into round three thinking you won to suddenly I'm fighting still? Yeah, yeah, no, um, that, that that was crazy uh, because uh, for some reason, you know, you, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Usually I could hear a lot, you know, I could hear my corners, I could hear the crowd. That fight was so intense. I, I couldn't really hear much. I didn't even hear the bell. So when I'm hitting this guy with elbows and finish him, I know he was in the red zone, man. It was it was getting bad. When the ref pulled me off, I was actually like expecting the ref pulled me off about 15 seconds before that. So when he yeah. finally did, I thought he was pulling me off because I finished him, not because of the bill. So yeah, I thought I thought the fight was over. And then and so mentally it messed me up when we had a fight again. I'm thinking I don't want to fight this. This I won this fight. You know what's going on? And then now not to mention it took two minutes just to get the fight back going. So I was thinking, this is chaotic, you know? So we finally get back in, and and I was just thinking and moving. I'm thinking, man, I don't even want to do this. I, I'm just going to ride it out. I know I got the win. And then he goes and tries to steal the whole fight with the arm bar. That, you know, that was crazy. I had to get out of there. And, um, you know, I maybe I should have picked it up a little more in the third round. But, yeah, mentally it had me jacked up, man. I can't lie. Well, truth be told, we've seen fights stop for less. You was relentless with those elbows, and you was doing double elbows. I fucking loved it. You was like double elbowing him, <laughs> and literally, it just does depend on the referee, doesn't it? Really, it really does. Yeah, I think the referee was saying that um, that the way I was throwing elbows wasn't causing too much danger. But anybody that knows, anybody that's been hit with elbows, even when you're close and tight like that, and you're, you're throwing it with your body. Those hurt even to even to the body. Elbows like that hurt. So imagine to the face. I mean, I'm sure everybody's seen his face. I don't understand how his corner let him back in there. But you know, the referee. I think I, I don't know what he was thinking because that guy was in real danger and uh, it could have been really bad. I mean, maybe I should have thrown him a lot harder. But 
I hit it, I hit a guy three, four times with the elbows. If a referee's gonna have to live with the fact that he didn't come back the next day, you know, so well, that, that would have been pretty bad. Well, let's be honest, there. I, I literally, from my perspective, watching the fight, even though it did go into a third round, I thought, well, it doesn't matter anyway because Herman's done. Now, obviously, we know the results over here in the UK before we watch it, so I knew it was a draw. But if I was watching that live, I'd have been like, there's no way Herman's coming out for the third. And if he does, Justin's going to be all over him. But Herman actually found his second win, and he came out striking. It was like a different fight. It was like that one minute, like, resurrected him. Was you shocked by that? Oh. oh, yeah, no. that You know, it was, it was two different worlds for the both of us because me and my corner... We're thinking, hey, we won that fight. This fight should be going on. It's already been a two-minute rest period. What's going on? This is crazy. There's a lot of confusion. In his corner, they're telling him, hey, you're okay. You're fine. This is your last shot. This is your chance to prove it. He had two minutes to rest, to come back to life, and, and he's just getting fired up. So it's totally opposite in the corners. They're telling him, yeah, yeah, come on. You can do it. you got a chance. Let's do it. My corner's like, no, nothing's going on. The fight's over. The fight's done. So it's two different mindsets. So when he came out, you know, I'm thinking, okay, fine, whatever. I'm just going to stick and move, be safe about it, you know. Maybe that was my mistake there. But then, like I said, he tried to get the arm bar and try to win the fight. And, and still, you know, I uh, I still controlled the, the third round. Yeah, I got this submission attempt, but still, it's like there should be no way for a draw, man. I mean, I, I dominated the second round so much. He, even the first round, he had good position. But, you know, I went for so many submission attempts in that fight. I had him in danger so many times. I, I don't understand the decision still. It kind of blows me away. But at the same time, I know that that fight, even though it's a draw, it's going to affect my career as a win. So I'm not really complaining. Well, I know you're not very happy with the judges, but I loved in the post-fight interview, you, know, you said you still love the judges. <laughs> that was pretty awesome of you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not mad. You know, hey, if they're going to do what they're going to do, you know. And, uh, and then I told the crowd, you know, you know I won that fight, and the crowd went berserk. The crowd was awesome. I had a lot of people at that fight, and uh, it was a great feeling, man. I, I knew that I was going to come out with the win. And, yeah, they say draw, but my heart says win, you know. I'll tell you what, Justin, watching you fight a few times now, you always know how to get the crowd amped up. You start throwing your arms up, the crowd go crazy when you fight, Justin. Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> I love doing it, man. I know what the people want to see, you know. That's why I do the spinning back kicks. That's why I do the Superman punches. You know, I come out jumping around, bouncing around, slapping hands. You know, the the, the fans are a big part of this, man, and I got to get them involved. I got to let them know I'm there. I'm not just some boring fighter coming out looking at the ground, hoping for a W. I'm in this. I love this, you know. This is, this is who I am, you know, and I can't do it without them. So all my fans, all, all my friends, family, thank you. This is what I'm really about. Well, speaking of the post-fight interview, um, color commentator Jimmy Smith. Now, to me, he seemed to get your name wrong. I'm sure he called you Jason when he introduced you over. Did you pick up on that? Oh. Yeah, yeah, it happened so much. I it didn't even phase me. It happens all the time. Hey, Justin. Hey, Jesse. Hey, Dustin. Uh, the list goes <laughs> on, man. You know, what, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> He corrected himself later on at the end, you know, so that, that was okay. I'm not, I'm not mad at him. Well, it was a pretty emotional post-fight speech from you. You know, it's always straight from the heart with you, Justin. Now, could you tell our listeners just how hard you've actually worked in the seven years you've been in mixed martial arts to get where you're at? Oh, yeah. It's, it's you know, it's been a really long, hard road. It's been almost about 10 years in MMA. And, uh, you know, I didn't come from a big-name gym. You know, I came from smaller gyms, and I travel all around California and Nevada and go to these different gyms so I can, you know, get these high level fighters. And, uh, it, you know, I had nobody holding my hand into this sport. You know, I, I fought all the way up here and that's what I've always told people. So yeah, you see these guys getting these shots early and then they're, and then they're, and then they're done. And they're getting a big show. They don't do too good. And then they're done. Now I worked my way here and now that I'm here, I'm going to own it and I'm going to stay here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going up from here. If the day comes and I start going down, then I'm going to hang them up. But I worked way too hard. 20, 22 fights now, I worked yeah. way too hard. You know, I took the long, hard road, so I ain't going anywhere. Well, this does still leave you without a winning Bellator. Now, as the draw was read out, we're seeing the shock and disappointment on your face. Uh, how was you feeling backstage and leaving the arena emotionally, Justin? Um, yeah, I was... 
you know, I was a little bummed, man, and um, and that's not even me. You know, I'm not, I'm always finding a way to be in a good mood about something. But uh, I went in the back and I sat down, and you know, for one, my head was damn pounding, but I was just sitting there like, damn, you know, um, what the hell, you know? I, I was just in shock, you know. But then here comes Jorn and Sam Kaplan, and, and they're like, hey, great fight, you know, good job. You, you ain't going nowhere, and just hearing that made my night. I'm like, hey, okay, you know, that was pretty much a win then. You know, everything's lining up, you know, uh, as if I won, even though it was a draw. You know, we're having big talks about getting in the next tournament or, or having another uh, main main card fight before the tournament. So everything's lining right back up. That's how it's been in my career. If you look at my career, every time I have a loss, I come back, I bounce back, I go on this winning streak, and everything lines up the way it's supposed to be. It's, it's destined for me to make it. It's just it's just taking a little longer, man. I don't know what it is. You know, I, I have I have a beautiful family. I have a wife and two kids. You know, I have two jobs. And I'm training. I'm doing the best I damn can. There's one life I have. But this MMA life is going good, man. And, and I'm slowly but surely making my way up there. And I'm not stopping. Well, let's dig into the actual in-cage action with you and Herman. Now, Herman came out and looked to... He looked like he wanted to bully you up against the cage from the onset. Uh, is that something you was expecting from him, Justin? No, no. You know, everybody was thinking that he was going to want to stand up and, and bang with me. And um, that was actually kind of shocking, man. I, uh, You know, of course, I'm ready for anything. But I really thought we were going to stand up and exchange because, uh, you know, he's, he's a brawler. He's got that big right hand. And, uh, you know, he's, he's got pretty good stand-up. But I think that they were judging me off my last fight with uh, Brent. Yeah. They were probably thinking, nah, you know, let's get him on the ground. He's not too good on my ground. My, my ground game has always been in question my whole career. I don't know why. You know, like I, I've got four well, submissions in my career. Let, let's, let's be honest here. We've seen your ground game against Daniel Roberts. And we all know Daniel Roberts is a good grappler. And you, you held your own. Yeah, yeah. So I was a little, I was a little thrown off um, by him coming down and, and trying to take me down. But that was fine because, you know what, that – that type of fight is hard work, you know, and I knew that, hey, if you keep working hard like this, you're going to gas up. You know, yeah. my conditioning's really good. I have the advantage with the elevation. So I was thinking, okay, you know, let, let's go ahead and fight that fight, you know, whatever. But uh, it, his ground was surprisingly good, you know. Uh, he was getting out of the guillotine chokes. Uh, he defended the, the rear naked choke well. Uh, I, I couldn't control him. Like, I had really good hits. I couldn't control him. Charles, what hell of a fighter, man. I give him mad props. Well, speaking of the guillotine choke, I, I did notice you set up a few times. Like you didn't seem to commit for it. You know, you didn't. Was that because you wanted to keep the fight standing, or did you just feel like you didn't have it? Did he sort of like get out of it before you could latch it on? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. His his defense for it was so good. Once I had him up against the cage and I had my wrist in, and I could turn my wrist to finish it. Once I turned my wrist, he would just like his body would just fall out and he would just slip out. It was. It was weird. I'd never seen anything like it before. He would just let his whole body drop, free fall, boom, and he'd be out of it. I was like, what is going on with this dude? There so, you go, uh, Justin. You got a new tip there now. Damn, if someone gets you in a guillotine, just, just drop down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know if I used it, but he used it like a charm. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're not, Justin. It'll probably backfire. <laughs> the guy will probably take you back so as you fall down. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> not going to work like, for me like that. It, it fucking worked for Herman. Why is it not working for me? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you did you did with the Hundocks on Herman and, you know, against the cage to, de- to defend yourself from being taken down and basically limit Herman's strikes. Uh, for our listeners, where is the best place to grab the Hundocks? Is it, like, more under the armpit or would you say go lower down near the elbow? Um, you know, it, it kind of depends. If you're if you're going if you're going for the for the knees to the body, then yeah, you want to go up. You want to go up high. If you're trying to set up a takedown, then you want to go down by the elbows. Because like in the third round, if you've seen, I came in and I got my I got I got my uh, underhook and swept around and took him down to the to the to the mat. You know, even though he got the went for the kimura and set up the armbar, which was perfect. But I mean, uh, kind of depends on if you want to attack or go for the takedown. Well, Herman did get you down to the mat in round one. Obviously, he was getting full mount, then he was taking you back. You just constantly managed to negate anything he could do. Like, literally, you was moving around, keeping him busy, you know. He couldn't 
He couldn't sink anything in. He tried to be a naked choke, give that up. I love that you defended that. Then you turned over. He couldn't hardly land any ground and pound on you. You know, but I have to ask, he's a big, strong guy. Just how tough is it to grapple with Herman, you know, with him being so big and so muscly? Because while, while you did make it tough for him, he looked like he had some good, good strong control. Yeah, you know, um, the, the first round, he, he was really strong. So when he got my back, um, you know, I was I was trying to avoid the damage. And, uh, you know, I was I was spinning, and it, it didn't look too good. You know, it, it didn't look too good. But I couldn't get good position and do something technical to get out because I would have had to take a few shots to do that. And yeah. I can't take no shots from him first first round. You know, he probably knocked me out, man. He's a big, strong dude in the first round. That's one crazy beast to, to, to fight with. Yeah. But second round, he slowed down a little bit. Third round, he slowed down a bit. You, you didn't see that same type of control in the second and third. But, uh, yeah, he was he was really strong, and I was just trying to stay safe. And it, it sucks because at the end of the first round, I finally spun around and got in the guard, and I was able to throw some good yeah. elbows. You know, if that would have happened a little sooner, he would have been in danger sooner. Like in the very beginning, when he first originally got my back standing, I broke the, the grip and spun around with the spinning back elbow, and that cut him, and I had him seeing stars. So he was in danger right away. Well, you mentioned that because basically you did spin around when he had your back and you, you know, you rolled into his guard. And from then on, like, end of round one, a good portion of round two, like, you built, you both sort of had the same amount of time on top. Maybe you had a little bit more, but. You seem to do more with it than he did. You seem to do more damage. Is there a reason behind that? Uh, you know, um, when when I did get to the garden in the first round, I was I was holding his wrist, and I drill that a lot. You know, I'm holding the wrist, and then I'll go for the elbow, so you can't really block it. Um, I think I think I'm just a little more technical. He was trying to just throw the bombs and get them on, and 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 I could read him, you know, and I see him coming, in, so I throw the block. And don't get me wrong, he slept some through, but for the most part, I'm seeing him come in, and you know, I'm I'm staying out of danger. With me, I'm I'm just a little faster, I'm just a little sharper, you know. I don't have these hundred pound arms coming after him, so I can sneak in there, you know. Well, he did tag you a couple of times when he had your back. He was punching your ears. It's pretty much all he could do. Now, obviously, because he's so, he's so big, he doesn't really need to, you know, get much leverage behind his punches. He can sort of like throw these short punches, but they still look like they're gonna hurt. You know, did they hurt much? Uh, yeah, I got a couple of lumps on the back of my head, um, but but the whole time I, I was never feeling like, wow, you know, that that hurt. Um, I think it was the second round he caught me with a good one um, when we were standing, but even then, you know, I, I wasn't seeing stars or anything. I've had fights where I was seeing stars and I had to shake the stars off. I didn't have that in that fight, but um, don't get me wrong, he hits really hard. I was just able to defend myself pretty well. Well, I have to bring up the front kick to Herman's face, what you did. That was absolutely beautiful. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that kick, please, and the correct technique to throw it? Like, I noticed you jumped up in the air. Uh, was that more of a flashy sort of thing, jumping up in the air, or, or did you get more power behind the kick doing that? Yeah, um, that's, you know, I, I try to do stuff like that all the time. You know, I try to do the flying ninja kick, the flying ninja knee, the <laughs> Superman punch. That's just that's just part of my freaking arsenal, you know, I... I try to use these these tricky attacks, but that that actually landed me attack of the night because I threw that and then I started throwing hands and I didn't even think he was gonna weather that storm, man. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of power in that and it's and it's hard to read, you know, because it looks like the left is gonna come up and the right comes up, and that and it worked perfect. Uh, I, I threw that a few times in, in fights, but I've never got it off clean like that, and uh, you know it, it's. It's magic when it comes together like that, man. It's such a it's such a good feeling because I just want to finish them right after it. Oh, I know that got through, so I started throwing the hands. Oh, man, I probably should have threw another flying ninja to finish it off. But, <laughs> you know, I was I was happy with it. it. It felt good. It feels good when stuff like that happens and comes through. For oh, me. You showed some real killer instinct. You, you basically charged him down against the cage. I literally thought he was going to finish it, though, and then... He was left and right in him. Do, do you sort of get caught up in those moments sometimes? Like, it's too good to be true. It's like, damn, I got him on the ropes here. You sort of like, so many things and so much adrenaline and excitement going through you. Like, you just don't know what to throw sometimes. Yeah, what's hard for me is that it's hard to tell myself, okay, do I stay in the kill zone or do I go for the takedown? You know, because once I get him up against the cage, you know, I could stay there and just attack. But most guys will just either go for a takedown or, or curl up or circle out. So it's kind of hard to read 
in the gym, it's, it's way easier to read. It's a little bit slower, you know, but in the case where everything's going hundred percent, it's, it's a little hard to read. So I try to go with the flow. I try to listen to my pet. Like everybody was mad at me with the Daniel Roberts fight. Cause I came in with a big combination head kick and then took him down. They were like, what were you thinking? You know, it's like, Hey, yeah. that's what I was telling. And it worked, you know? So last night, you know, Hey, that's what I was thinking. And it worked the other night. Sorry. Well, looking back on the fight as a whole, is there anything in the fight that you would like go back and change? Um, if I can go back, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd mentally, I'd, I'd figure out how to get that fire back in me for the third round because I was, I was a little upset and I was thinking, you know, this is, this is BS going to the third round. Um, it was actually kind of like a tease too. Cause I looked over and I seen this corner man was holding a towel on the top of the cage. And I'm thinking, are you going to throw the towel or what? Don't just hold it. Throw it in, save your man. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing with the towel hanging right there? So, uh, you know, it, it was crazy mentally. I, I didn't even want to fight the third I, round, I, to be honest. Not, are, you still, are you still allowed to do that, Justin? I've not seen that for a long time where the corner man throws in the towel. I thought they might have outlawed oh, yeah. that. Oh, for sure you are. For sure you oh. are. You know, your your guys in there getting beat up and the ref isn't stopping it. You know, hey, you got to take care of your corner man. It's up to you to, to take care of your guy as well. Well, that's an important argument then, because there's been some, you know, bad ref stoppages, and a lot of these referees take, you know, a lot of flack for stopping the fight too late. Well, you can also blame the corners now too. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And don't get me wrong; it's hard for the ref. I know it's hard for the yeah. ref. I know it's hard for the judges. But well, hey, man, you know you just get they get shit either way. They get shit either way. Whether they stop it too soon, they stop it too late. You know, there's very rare cases where I think a fight's been stopped very late. You know. You got, yeah. you got, to, you got to, like you, you, the Uriah Faber fight against Burrell, A lot of people said that was stopped too late, you know. And then some were saying it was stopped, stopped too soon because he had his hands up and he was defending himself. So you can't win either way. You really can't. Okay, Justin, mm-hmm. thank you for joining me today. Is there anything you want to say to our listeners or any sponsors or shout outs you would like to do? Yeah, you know, I want to uh, shout out to my to my family and friends. You know, my beautiful wife Daniela and my daughters Kalina and Ksenia. You know, of course, I want to thank 5150. I want to thank all the gyms that, that I go train with, Iron Horse, you know, uh, Reno Academy of Combat, Combat Fitness, Fight Corps. I want to thank my sister, going to make here, Preferred Mag, uh, Limousines, TGV, Get Some, McKinney, Lionel White, Joe Nitro, um, Chase, uh, Erod. I want to, I want to thank you for having me on the show. You know, um, I'm, once I get back in that cage, in that Bellator cage, man, it, it, it's going to be another great show. Just know that, you know. So I want to thank everybody who's following me. You know, I'm, I'm on I'm on Facebook at Justin Baseman. I'm on Twitter. You know, follow me at Justin Baseman. So, you know, I'll make it easy for you, man. It's, it's, it's going to be a good road. Okay, from MMA Crips Fighting Talk, thank you for watching.